All right, we're back. We're on page five of notes 24, which is all about solving differential equations. It's kind of a lot to think about when you're solving differential equations um, because they're, they're basically related to integrals and integrals are a little harder than derivatives. You know how it goes. Um, so the next thing that we want to think about as we're trying to solve these is uh, what's the domain? So I've said several times that uh, the solution to a differential equation is a function that is continuous on an interval that contains the initial condition. So we're gonna have to think about domain. So there's a, a relatively simple example of this and it's actually this problem. So um, if we have dy dx is equal to uh, just one over x, the initial condition has a lot to do with the solution. So there's this type of thing where y of negative one, so x is negative one and y is zero. Uh, that's going to actually give you a different result than this, where we have the exact same differential equation, but y of positive 1. So when x is positive 1, y is equal to 0. So let's actually solve these, and uh, we'll see what that means. So uh, the solution process is, is you know, the same for both of them. So we're going to get uh, dy is equal to uh, dx over x, and then integral, integral natural log absolute value of y is equal to, uh, that's totally wrong. Um, so we get y is equal to uh, the natural log of the absolute value of x and then plus c. Okay, so uh, y is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. The issue here is that this function, uh, where could I draw this potentially? Where do I have room? I have like some room over here. Uh, if I were to draw the natural log of the absolute value of x, it would look like this. So it's kind of like, it's an even function because of that absolute value. So it looks like this. The problem is it's not continuous over the reals. So when you're given an initial condition, you're gonna have to choose, right? So is the initial x value positive? in which case we'll take the right branch of this thing. Is the initial condition negative, in which case we'll take the left branch of this thing? We have to decide, right? So this would be, uh, we would pick, uh, how could I do this? Let's see. We would choose this if uh, x has to be less than zero. And then we would choose, uh, let me use a different color. We would choose this if x is greater than zero, right? So we're gonna have to make a choice. So I'm gonna do this two different ways, I guess. Um, so first, let me just solve for C. So I know that uh, in the problem, uh, run out of colors here, or I just don't know what colors I've used. We know that this is our initial condition. So zero is gonna be the natural log of the absolute value of one, but the absolute value of one is one and the natural log of one is zero. So uh, we've actually just gotten C equals zero. Okay, so our solution is y equals the natural log of the absolute value of x. But because of this, x is definitely less than zero. So I have to include that in my solution. So I need to say it's really this when x is less than zero. Now, the absolute value of x is equal to x when x is greater than zero. It's the opposite of x when x is less than zero. So what you could potentially do, which I would stop here, right? So this, this is the answer that I would get and I would just be done with it. So let me actually, uh, I'm gonna highlight that. I would stop here and I would be done. But technically you could rewrite it as y equals the natural log of negative x, where x has to be less than zero. You're still gonna have to say that x has to be less than zero, in my opinion, um, to really answer the question but you could get away with it. Like I would just leave it as the absolute values, like way easier that way. Um, so here we get uh, the integral of dy will equal the integral of, I'm gonna write it as one over x dx this time, just for like a little variety. Also, you may think to do that, right? So we get this, this is, it's the exact same problem, which is why I'm like kind of flying through it. Uh, at this point though, we get uh, our initial condition. So the key thing there is in the initial condition, x is positive one, so x is greater than zero this time. So we'll solve and get zero is the natural log of one plus c. So c is definitely zero. So we would say y is the natural log of the absolute value of x. 
And then we have to say, since up here, x is greater than zero, we have to stipulate because we need to get a continuous function. We cannot get this graph on the right here. That's not an option. We're either gonna get the right branch or the left branch, not both. So in this case, we're gonna get the right-hand branch. And this would be my answer. So this is something you need to think about when the solution that you're getting is not continuous, right? So natural log of the absolute value of x is not continuous, you gotta worry. So what should it be? Now the general solution that we got, the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c, there's really nothing we can do about that because we don't know an initial condition yet um, to specify. We could break it down and say like, if x is greater than zero, it'll be this. If x is less than zero, it'll be this. Uh, you know, you do either of those. Uh, but I, I guess I should also say here, I would stop at the highlighted thing, but since x is greater than zero, you could say it's y equals the natural log of just plain x um, when x is greater than zero. So you could do that. I wouldn't, um, but you could. So I'm gonna go ahead and just solve um, a couple of these. Maybe I'll solve one of these. I'm trying to make the videos even for this page. I don't know if that's gonna happen uh, because I don't know how hard any of these are. So uh, I'm gonna start with A and I'll see how long that takes, I guess. I guess that's my strategy. All right, so first thing I'm gonna separate. So dy over y squared is gonna be one over x cubed dx. I kind of like putting the dx at the end. I don't know. Um, we're gonna integrate. I think it's easier to think of this as y to the negative second dy. And I actually think it's easier to think of this as x to the negative third and then dx. So this will become negative one over y, right? So plus one times the reciprocal, you get negative y to the negative one, but uh, y to the negative one is one over y. So I think it's better to write it that way. And then this will be uh, plus one is negative two times the reciprocal. So negative one half. I'm gonna write it as x to the negative second, just to be inconsistent, I guess. Uh, let's use the initial condition. So we have this. So we're gonna uh, plug in, so what is that? Negative one third is uh, negative one half, and then uh, two squared is four, one over four, so I think it's negative one eighth plus C. Okay, so C is gonna be uh, negative one third plus one eighth, so negative eight plus negative one eighth, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me, let me just, let, let me write it out. Negative one third plus one eighth. Okay, negative one third plus, oh yeah, negative eight plus three, negative five over 24. Okay, so I think, but we're, we're making progress, but we're not there yet, right? We have to solve for y. So what I usually do on these, I just write them messy and, and kind of like let it go. Um, so we're gonna combine uh, this and this to give us, uh, negative one over y equals, let's say negative one over two uh, x squared, and then minus five over 24. Ooh, so ugly. Um, I really don't wanna do anything with that though. Uh, multiply through by a negative, we'll clear out all of the negative signs, and then I'm gonna flip it, take the reciprocal, I guess people would prefer I say, uh, as one over, uh, so I'm just gonna like leave it really messy, I think. So you could, you could live with this as your final answer, I think, if you really wanted to. Um, I think it's probably better to get a common denominator, which I really don't wanna do. Um, but so like, I would be content with this as my final answer. So let me just like highlight that and say, you know, we could, could leave it like this, I think, in some world. Uh, but I guess I should get a common denominator and like clean it up. So let's see. In the denominator, I would have 12 plus 5x squared. And in the numerator, I would have uh, 24x squared. 20, okay, so I'm gonna end up with 24x squared in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I need a 12 and a, so, 12 plus 5x squared. I think that's the answer a calculator will give me if I try to solve it. Uh, I'm gonna try to solve it. So this has not been working for me today, bouncing back and forth. So I think I'll be able to get to the uh, calculator's not even open. 
you know what? I'm not even going to bother. Uh, if this is wrong, I will correct it in the next one. I don't really think it is. Um, I mean, I guess we could, we could go through it a little more clearly, right? Like, uh, so did we start correctly? We divided by y squared. We brought over dx. That was good. We wrote everything with negative exponents. Plus one times the reciprocal. Plus one times the reciprocal. We're good there. Then we plug in three for y, get negative one third. Plug in two for um, x, and we get negative one eighth. So that's good. Uh, negative one eighth. No, negative one third is uh, negative eight twenty fourths plus three twenty fourths. Negative five twenty fourths. Good. And we rewrote it. That was good. Multiply through by a negative. That was good. Took reciprocals. That was good. And then it's just a question of, did I mess up when I tried to skip like a million steps on the last one? And maybe I did. I don't actually think I did, though. Uh, I needed a 12 over 12, and I needed an x squared over x squared. Give me 12 plus 5x squared, 24x squared. I think it's good. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out uh, in the interim, and I'll come back and uh, correct it if it's wrong. Otherwise, I'm going to come back and finish this page. So see you there.